What's poppin' YouTube family? It's your girl Show the OT, a your fave occupational therapist here to help you and others live their best lives. Let's get started. Bye. 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 Today we are going to be talking about the evaluation process, specifically the pediatric outpatient occupational therapy evaluation process. So this could be good to know as a parent, but for me this was specifically good to know as a student. Like when I went out into field work, the biggest thing that caused me the most anxiety was evaluations. I was like, how am I supposed to, you know, bring this kid in, see what things they need to work on, tell the parent what things they need to work on and sound confident while doing it. So I decided to make this video to make all my fresh students, new practitioners out there feel more comfortable with the OT evaluation process. If you're in an outpatient setting, like I said, this is outpatient. If you're in schools this is going to be different if you're in acute care this is going to be different um, so this is specifically in the outpatient setting for pediatrics all right let's get into the video okay step one this is probably the most important step but i feel like a lot of people you know downplay it and don't feel like it's the most important step but to me it is you just simply have to introduce yourself and so that sounds like what girl that's so easy like of course i'm going to introduce myself obviously yes you're going to introduce yourself but the way you introduce yourself is super important um this is the first impression that you're going to make on this kid and their family um their parent their grandparent whoever's bringing them for the evaluation this is the very first impression they're ever gonna have of you um so the point of an evaluation is to literally look into their lives like they're gonna have to um tell you some very personal things and so if you don't feel personable to them if they don't connect to you this is going to be hard for them to do it's going to make it very uncomfortable and it's going to make it very awkward so introducing yourself in a warm and welcoming way is super important um also when you get out there also just give a brief explanation of what peds ot is because occupational therapy is a huge 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 field like there's so many dynamics to it pediatric ot and what you do in an outpatient setting is going to be totally different than what they've heard about their friend getting um ot because they hurt their hand like so giving them a brief explanation of what ot is and why it could help their kid um when you first meet them is going to be super super important they're going to feel more knowledgeable more comfortable and just like safe with you because you took the time to explain that to them so after you give them their explanation you introduce yourself then it's time for you to take the kid back right and so this is awkward this is different because you're a stranger you're a stranger to this family you're a stranger to this kid so this is where you kind of have to read the room look at those cues that they're giving you to see if the kid is comfortable coming back by themselves or if they're going to need the parent to come with now if the kid is bouncing off the wall ready to get back there because they're like oh i saw fun things back there then just kind of say hey mom dad grandma grandpa are you okay with me taking little jimmy back so i can do some testing with him um do you just feel do you feel comfortable with that and so if they feel comfortable then go ahead and take little jimmy back and you go on to step number two but if they don't feel comfortable then let them come back with you that is the biggest thing that i learned like i know that sounds scary especially as a new practitioner as a student that sounds scary to have the parent guardian whoever come back with you and observe what you're doing while you're doing it because you're already like frazzled like i don't even know what i'm doing so now i got the parent watching and seeing what i'm doing the parent has no idea what you are supposed to be doing so let's start there this is not a supervisor this is not somebody that knows ot okay they literally have no clue what you're doing so as long as you you know fake it till you make it and have that confidence you will be okay and number two you allowing them to come back is just going to make them feel more safe and secure like they don't know you you're a stranger so they just want to make sure that the child that they're bringing is in good hands and so remember they're more scared than you are 
They literally are more scared than you are. They are bringing their child here because somebody told them like, hey, I see delays. Hey, um, they're not progressing how they should be progressing. Maybe they should get OT. So that's scary for a parent guardian to hear. So they're already they're more scared than you are. They're scared to hear what you're about to tell them. So they're not worried about whether or not you know what you're doing. They're worried about what you're going to see when you bring him back there. So like I said, introduce yourself, explain what Pete's OT is, and then, you know, read the room. Bring him back by himself or bring the whole entire family back. Sometimes that can be mom, dad, sister, brother. It could be the whole thing. Um, and that can be overwhelming. If you need to, you can always grab a colleague, grab a tech, whatever you have to, you know, occupy some of the family members if it's too much. Um, but yeah, just the goal in this first step is to make sure the child in the family feel welcomed and feel safe. All right, on to step number two. All right, step number two is actually gonna have three parts to it. Okay, so now you have little Jimmy back there. You're ready to look at what skills he has, where he needs improvements, all that jazz, all right? So now he's back there, you're gonna do some type of standardized test with him. Um, in evaluations for insurance purposes, you want to have some type of standardized test so that you have some type of qualitative data. You want some type of numbers on your evaluation write-up so that insurance is like, okay, yada, 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 they need services approved, whatever, whatever insurance people do. <laughs> so you want some type of standardized test. Now, not every kid is able to do a standardized test, not literally not every kid is able to do that. So if they're not able to complete the Peabody, if they're not able to complete the bot, just give the parent the sensory profile. I always like to give the parent the sensory profile to fill out. It's just like a questionnaire that they can fill out. And so that provides you some type of numbers. Um, if your clinic um, requires you to do some type of other standardized test besides the sensory profile, then try to complete the Peabody, try to complete the bot, but just put the zeros and the, that they can't do it pretty much. And so they'll score low, unfortunately because you know standardized tests whatever so they'll score low on that but then you'll have your numbers and then the insurance people will see they obviously need services because they score super low on that standardized test and so you just pretty much for insurance purposes you want some type of standardized test on your evaluation write-up just so you know they get approved for their services and their services are covered all right now part two of step number two <laughs> Um, I like to do some type of informal assessment. Sometimes my best insight, my best like observations come from an informal assessment rather than a formal assessment or some type of structured assessment. So I like to take them to the gym and see their gross motor skills. I like to do a like informal visual assessment on them. Just make it fun. Just make it just informal and not too structured. And the kids love it too because it doesn't feel as, as, um, Structure. They just they, it doesn't feel as structured. It seems like you're just playing, but you are still getting the information that you need. So some type of informal assessment is all, always good to add because I feel like it just gives me the most insight. All right, step three of step number two, or part three of step number two, <laughs> um, is just letting them play. Honestly, I think that's a big one too. It's just letting them play and sitting back and watching them play. Um, obviously, sometimes they're not just gonna let you sit back and they're gonna want you to play with them. And so yeah, just playing with them, seeing their natural skills while they play, seeing just what you observe, um, seeing those clinical observations that you observe while they are just sitting there playing how they naturally play honestly gives you probably the most insight that you're ever going to get to so there we go three parts to step number two is some type of standardized assessment for insurance purposes you're going to do some type of informal assessment whether it be gross motor visual fine motor whatever you need to do to get the information that you need and then you're going to just let them play and observe them playing and see what type of things that you see while they play all right, on to step number three. Okay, step number three means it is time for the parent interview. The parent interview is probably the most hefty part of the evaluation process. Um, I broke it down into five steps. Yes, five steps. That is a lot, but each step is important. So you should probably 
hopefully do each step of them. <laughs> so the first part in the parent interview is you're just gonna let them, let the parent and guardian tell you what their concerns are for their kid. Why did they bring them to this evaluation? Who told them what? What are they seeing at home? Just let them express their concerns. And so this can sometimes be a lengthy process because you know this is their time to share. And so they wanna get everything out possible that they see um, and all the things. And so this is, this is a lengthy part of the process, just letting them get out their concerns. So they're gonna tell you what they see at home. They're gonna tell you what their teacher is telling them. They're, they're gonna tell you what the doctor told them. This is the time for you to soak in all that information information and hear their perspective on things. This is a super important part of the process and it just feels good to them to finally let it out and get it out. Be prepared to get some tears sometimes. If their kid has significant behaviors, then that's hard for them and them telling you a part of that is overwhelming and frustrating and so you they might get emotional. Like be prepared to handle their emotions if they arise. Grab a tissue, let them know like, hey, this is a safe space. I'm here to listen. Whatever you tell me, I'm just taking it in. This is a no judgment zone. Sometimes they feel like they're failing as a parent because now their kid needs services. Like just be there to reassure them that they're not failing as a parent. They're actually doing a great job as a parent because now they're bringing their kid here to get the help that they need. Just reassure them, let them know that you're here to help and that this is a team process and we're gonna you know, figure it all out together. That's all they wanna hear. Like as they're telling you their whole life story, that's all they want to hear is that it's it's gonna be okay and we're gonna figure it out that's it all right on to part two of step number three <laughs> all right now that they've told you their whole life story now it's your turn to ask some questions so this is where you're gonna ask questions about medical history performance at school their self-care skills just general background information history so if I don't know how everyone's clinic does it but if they have intake forms you probably know a lot of this stuff like they've already filled out and answered a lot of these questions but I always just like to go over it just to make sure that all the information that I have from the intake forms is accurate inf information from the parent. And so just asking them like, hey, like, medical history, background information, what school they go to, what grade they're in, all that information um, is gonna be important for, during your write-up of the evaluation. And then you also wanna ask those personal questions and you can also do this. So step one and two can all honestly be interchangeable. So as they're telling you their life story, you can also sprinkle in some questions. Like if they're talking about, oh my goodness, my kid cannot sit still during dinner. Oh, that is a perfect segue for you to start asking questions about self-care skills. How do they do with the, um, feeding process how do they do with bath time how do they do with grooming how do they do with dressing like in inter like interject it as you see fit like it doesn't have to be like oh first you have to do this next you have to do this there are just different parts but the parts can occur interchangeably however you see fit just make it feel natural um, don't make it too awkward um, and that comes with practice like if it feels awkward that's because you just haven't uh, haven't had enough practice with it and that's okay so just make it feel as comfortable as possible so ask those questions get that background information um, this is just gonna be good for you to know about the kid and also good for you to write up in to your evaluation report all right next Part three, part three of step three. Okay, this is where you're going to discuss strengths and weaknesses. This is where you talk about what you saw when you brought little Jimmy back and you were doing your assessments and things like that. So key, like really focus on strengths. Like parents are bringing them here because they know that little Jimmy has stuff to work on. So they are aware, they're here for a reason. They know that little Jimmy has things to work on. So please tell them some things that Jimmy is doing great. Tell them the great things that you saw Jimmy do back there. Let them know that their kid does have strengths. It's not just all weaknesses. That is a really important part to making the parent feel like they are not just failing at life, okay? So Jimmy has some strengths too. D dig deep, okay? Maybe Jimmy, look, Jimmy had a lot of stuff going on, but Jimmy had some strengths, so find no strengths. <laughs> Okay, dig deep and find those strengths and share those with the parents because they're gonna really appreciate hearing. Oh, that Jimmy does have some good things going on for him too. But yes, you're also there to mention the things that Jimmy needs to work on. And so also mention what you saw in the evaluation process and the goals that you feel like you're going to um, set for Jimmy um, so that he can, you know, improve on the things that mom 
mom, dad, grandma, and grandpa are seeing at home. And so that's key. So whatever you saw in the evaluation, I always try to link it back to what the parents are seeing at home so that they understand like, okay, this is why this is important. So for example, if you see little Jimmy W sitting, you know that he has a weak core. Um, but if you just tell him parents, oh yes, I saw him W sitting, so he has a weak core. So that's going to be one of his goals. They're going to be like, why does my kid have to be like a athletic individual and have ab and have a six pack like I'm not understanding like that's what they're gonna think they're gonna be like I didn't bring him here because he needs a six pack I didn't bring him here because he needs a strong core I brought him here because little Jimmy don't be sitting down at dinner time now you can link that to oh because he has a weak core it's hard for him to sit for longer periods of time which means at dinner time you got him sitting down for 30 minutes and that core is over there screaming at him I'm tired of sitting so now he's not sitting down so linking that back to what they're seeing at home is going to be so much more beneficial and you're going to get so much more parent buy-in. You're going to get them to actually do the things that you're asking them to do at home because, oh, now I get it. His weak core is making it hard for him to sit at the table, which means that's why he won't sit for dinner time. That like now they're going to be like, OK, what do we do? How do we strengthen his core? Like <laughs> they're going to be like eating out the palm of your hands, trying to figure out what they can do to help him. So, yep. Yeah. That is part three of step three. <laughs> All right, let's go on to part four. All right, part four is where you just discuss next steps. So frequency of services, whether or not they need to refer, need to be referred to another discipline, um, home exercise program information, um, anything that they need to know for the upcoming next steps of the process. Oh, and how long is it gonna take for you to write up that evaluation you're talking about? So usually it takes me about a week to write it up, so I always tell them, oh, you'll get your evaluation right up within a week. And so, yeah, just letting them know what the next steps are so they're not lost in that process. Step four is pretty easy pretty easy all right on to step five step five is just answering any questions they have you just gave them a lot of information and so like i said steps are interchangeable it doesn't all have to be like step one step two step three step four it doesn't have to be like that um so you're probably answering questions all throughout while you're talking but at the end you just kind of want to say a blanket statement of do you have any questions i know i just gave you a lot of information and it can feel overwhelming so i'm here to answer any questions that you have anything like like just give them that type of space so that they can answer any lingering questions that they might have been holding back um, for the end. So yeah, that was a lot. I know I said three steps. It was three steps though. I did not lie to y'all. It was three steps. It's just parts within the steps. Okay. <laughs> All right, y'all, I hope all that made sense. I know it was a lot, but the evaluation process is a lot, but I broke it down for y'all. So hopefully that made sense and y'all can use this information going forward. And honestly, if parents like to know what the evaluation process looks like, send this video to them so they know what you're doing and the steps that are gonna go into it so they don't feel anxious as they're entering into that evaluation process. All right, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye, guys.